All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to introduce is last class period we talked about standard form, and we just went over an example on how to graph in standard form, okay? Um, the main important thing, though, about standard form was we also talked about the general characteristics of a graph, y equals x squared. And if you guys remember, this is what we called our parent graph. And we didn't really do anything with the parent graph. It was just to kind of show like what the graph looks like. Um, and if we were to use like a table of values, you would see that 1, 1, 2, 4, 2, 4, graph something like this. Okay? But the main important thing that we talked about was you know, either the minimum or the maximum where the graph kind of rebounds was what we called the vertex. And what's important though, if we were to plug in like 1, you would get y value would be 1. You go over 2, go over 4. So I want you, it's very important for you guys to understand the relationship with no transformations, with no a, b, and c, or, touch, or touching your phone, that you can see that this graph, this is what the parent graph looks like with no changes or anything else. The relationship, and what I really want to highlight, is the relationship of these other two points compared to the vertex. If you're able to find the vertex, to, to graph the rest of it, you see you go over one, up one. And then the next one, you go over two, up four, because that's based on the table of values. I'm not going to write in the table of values, but if you were to do a table of values for y equals x squared, you would get these points. Okay? So now we're going to be looking at the vertex form, which is going to be very important for us to know everything about this parent graph. Um, the next thing that's, that I want to highlight between the vertex form and the parent, uh, parent or the standard form is you guys notice besides x and y, what is the only other letter that they have in common? Huh? What? A. A. So A is going to have some very distinct characteristics that's going to work for both standard form and also work for vertex form. It's going to affect the graph in similar ways. However, where B and C we used, um, or really just B we used to help us identify the axis symmetry, we don't have, and the vertex, we don't have a B in this vertex form. We now have it in H and K. And they're going to represent some similar values, but they're also going to represent different ways for us to identify the axis symmetry and the vertex, which we'll go over. But first, let's talk about A, because A is what they have in common. So when A is greater than 0, our graph opens up. And you guys remember that. Even if you have a quadratic and A is positive, you know that that graph is going to open up. If A is less than 0, then the graph opens down. Or what we say, it reflects the x-axis. And that was the exact same thing over here. Right? If we had, hold on just one second. If we had a graph that was negative, of negative a, we know that graph would reflect down. Right? It would look something like this. You could think of it that way, yes. Now, let's look at the absolute value of A. So regardless of positive or negative, let's look at the absolute value of A. If the absolute value of A is greater than the number 1, then we have a horizontal compression. And what that means is the graph is now going to be compressed horizontally, or we could also think of it vertically stretched. But it's going to be horizontally compressed. So let's look at an example. What about if I looked at y equals 2x squared? Okay, I'm not dealing with b, c, h's, and k's. Let's just look at it in this format. If I had something, you can see the absolute value of a is greater than 1. If I was going to use a table of values here, actually, you know what? Let's do the y equals x squared here real quick. Do a quick little table of values. x, y. If x equals 1, y would equal 1. If x equals 2, y equals 4. You guys agree with me? If x equals 0, y would equal 0. Now, let's do the equation 2x squared. And let's only deal with the y coordinate. If I was going to do 2x squared, if I plug in 1, and for 2x squared, 1 squared is 1, times 2 is now 2. If I plug in 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 0 is still 0. So what that means is to graph y equals 2x squared, if I go over 1, I'm now going to go up to 2. If I go over 2, I now go up to 8. And you guys can see reflecting this over, 
the graph is much skinnier. Do you guys see how it's been compressed? Just because this value of a was larger than 1. And that's going to be true in vertex form as well. If the absolute value of a is less than 1, then the graph is horizontally, horizontal stretch. So let's look at another one. Let's choose red. Let's do y equals 1 half x squared. Again, let's just choose the y values. What I'm seeing is I'm, like the x values are the same. I'm going to plug in 1, and I'm going to see what y is. I'm going to plug in 2 and see what y is. That's what I'm saying. Um, so I'm going to use the same table. So if I plug in 1 in for x, x squared is 1 times 1 half is just 1 half. If I plug in 2, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 half is 2. And 0 will still be 0. So again, notice the vertex is still the same, right? This graph is not moving anywhere. The vertex is still the same. But now, as I go over 1, I only go up to 1 half. As I go over 2, I go up 2. And if I reflect these, you guys can see now my graph is being stretched, right, horizontally. Okay. So what A does is it doesn't move the graph left or right at all. All it does is affect how the, it, it kind of, um, it doesn't affect the orientation. It just affects the shape of the graph if it's opening up, opening down, or if it's being stretched or compressed. Does that make sense? Yes? OK. So what I want you guys to understand is when you guys are looking at an equation, and I'm asking you to graph an equation, when you're looking at an equation and you see the first thing you're going to want to look at is look at A. Is it going to be opening up or down? Is there going to be a stretch or a compression? That's a very important point, or a very important thing that you're going to have to factor in. The last thing that we're going to deal with is going to be H, which is going to shift the graph left and right and to uh, make it simple, I'm just going to say it's the opposite where k equals, you're going to shift up and down, shifting up and down. So basically, what h does is, you guys notice when I did all three of these, the vertex is the same. It never moved. But when now I'm going to apply h and k, what that's going to do is that's going to move the graph. So theoretically, what actually happens, not theoretically, actually what happens is your vertex takes the coordinates of h comma k. So rather than having to do b divided by 2 and then plug that back into the equation like we did for standard form, now all we need to do to find the vertex is find out what h and k is. And remember that the axis symmetry goes through the vertex, right? This axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. So your axis of symmetry, your axis of symmetry is x equals h. Now, the one question I get before I get into my examples, the one question I commonly always get is, why is it always opposite? What do you really mean opposite? Well, let me just look at two examples. If I had y equals x plus 1 squared and y, no, let's do minus, minus 1. And then I did y equals x plus 1 squared. Okay. What I mean by opposite is this is x minus 1. That means you're transferring it left and right. You guys would think negative would be, trans would be shifting it left but it's actually transferring it to the right. Why? The reason being is, what is the value of h here? The value of h is 1, not negative 1. Well, because if you look at the formula, it says x minus h. x minus what? What am I minusing? 1. 1. Could you flip the phone over? So it's x minus 1. So that means x, or sorry, h is equal to 1. That means the new vertex is 1, so I'm going to move it to the right one. If you look over here, some people say, well, there's no minus in here. You're right, but we can always rewrite an addition problem as x minus negative 1 squared. You can always do an apportion as x minus negative 1, right? That's the same thing as plus, minus a negative. So we always have to do that every time it's negative? Well, you, you can, yeah, or you can just think of it as the opposite, which is usually the easiest thing that students can do to remember this, is just say, oh, if it's minus, I shift to the right. If it's plus, I shift to the left. Okay, But I'm just explaining it 
that really this is minus a negative. That means h in this case is equal to negative 1, okay? which would mean the axis symmetry is now at negative 1, meaning the graph is being shifted to the left, not to the right. Okay? Um, that is the basic stuff you guys are going to want to have written down for this. Ooh, that was a 10-minute video.